Good afternoon, everyone here from Richmond. And uh, I think in Seattle or around Seattle is Graham Haring with all of us. How are you, Graham? ¿Cómo estás? Yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm in Olympia, Washington. It's like an hour south of Seattle. Um, I go to Evergreen State College and I play on their men's soccer team and I'm 35 years old right now. I still have two seasons to play, so mm -hmm. yeah, I'm yeah. excited. Mm -hmm. So did you, you play college? We, we met each other when you were, I don't think you were playing at the time. Uh, you also played, as I, you also coached for quite a few seasons. And as you yeah. said, you are back uh, on, on playing at a little bit unusual age. And so that's why one of the aspects of today's uh, piece is uh, for you to give us the, the list of those players over 35. Uh, but before that, uh, definitely the fact that you are coming back to, to play at 35 says quite a bit, but I want to hear from you uh, what it means this, this game for you. Um, how will you elaborate that uh, soccer is a way of life for you? Um, and uh, yeah, the importance and the significance overall of this game for you in your life. Yeah. Um, well, I always like to have this approach to soccer and use the word holistic, uh, where it encompasses like pretty much every minute of every day of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm always thinking of like, how can this apply to football and make me better today? You know, if, if it's training and nutrition, rest, um, recovery, all these things, I'm just always thinking about football. I mean, I've been working too, and I work as a baker. It's a hard job, but uh, at the same time, I'm like, when I take breaks, I eat right. And I'm always thinking about like stretching while I'm working and just maintaining my body, even though like I do work early hours and long days, but I'm still always thinking like, hey, I got to get out and train today and do something for football. And so that, that's really like this holistic idea of living for the sport. Um, more than that, uh, for me, it has to be fun. Like there's this creativity involved. I'm, I've always seen myself as kind of an attacking player. I like to have the ball. I like to do things with the ball. And, and that's like this creativity that you get to do. And then that's what I love. Um, I almost think of it like I'm an artist with the ball and every kick or touch is a brush stroke on a canvas. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I like to do skills with the ball and I like to do that under pressure. Uh, just yesterday we were playing like in Espacio Reducido, small sided 6v6 games mm -hmm. with small goals. And it's really fun, tight spaces. You have to be creative, you have to be fast. Uh, it's not just uh, kicking the ball and running or receiving a long pass and running into open space. There is no open space. So <laughs> it's all about the skills in tight spaces. Um, also, uh, the, at my age, like athleticism comes into play because I'm playing with guys in their 18, 20, 23, mm -hmm. something like that age. And they're just very fit. They uh, can run forever. Uh, so being athletic and learning to like kind of tune my body the way it needs to be done has been really important to me. Like mm -hmm. I, I go to the gym and do like weight, but not heavy weight. And I try and do this stuff consistently. I try and keep my core really strong. Um, I try and uh, have a light frame. I don't want to put on large muscle mass. I want to be lean. Uh, all these things kind of help me. And then, uh, recovering with like massage tools like i have this massage gun i use different sports creams that like help the muscle inflammation and i eat like a pretty strict diet like i eat high carbs low fat high protein um so these are all things i've learned over the years that i didn't have all these tools when i started playing but uh you just do this long enough and you start learning these things um, yeah, yeah that... <laughs> it, it sounds that it uh, encompasses a lot uh, 
So one of the biggest things when, when you think in, in what you are doing right now with, with soccer, it's just, it gives purpose uh, for theoretically, or in a sense, it gives purpose for almost everything you do during the day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the next piece to that or the other side to that is the purpose of connecting with others and meeting new teammates, working with coaches, networking with um, opponents and uh, the opponent coaches. Like, they're all, like, very interesting people to me, and I want to be connected to them. That's why I'm really doing this is that aspect, too. Um, I like to have the opportunity in the in the match to – deal with adversity deal with contrast and deal with players being down on themselves me being down on myself and uplifting so so that's like kind of the reward i guess is to play the match and and go through all that contrast and mm -hmm. have all these nice connections with cool people um some some of the players are great at soccer some of them are still learning a lot we have a wide variety in this environment Uh, some guys get a lot of minutes, some don't. And it's interacting with all of them that's really kind of enjoyable. <laughs> uh, just yesterday, seeing some of the guys for the first time in a couple of months, uh, players were really excited to see each other. You know, <laughs> the soccer wasn't that great, but just the vibe was really good. And that's why I'm really doing this too, to, to network and to meet these guys and kind of hear their stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the, the fact is that it is a game. <laughs> so uh, if you don't have the opponents, we actually cannot play the game. Uh, but the beauty of it is that uh, it's a safe space for all the things that we want in theoretically almost in our lives to happen in a safe space again. So uh, uh, treat it the right way and give it Uh, to you and, and to us, yes, the, the presence of mind of being in the moment and learning from all that, not just during the game, but in training and in all the process. Sounds, sounds wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that said, uh, the, the challenge, but also, again, the, the platform for you to reflect a little bit of uh, players that are, of course, playing with all the resources and all this, uh, but playing at a high level at the uh, advanced age. And we said 35 or older. And uh, again, one more opportunity to reflect a little bit of what it takes mentally, physically, for these players to still be in the game and competing and um, getting also uh, more knowledge and, and more of those elements that you are also um, commenting and that you are also kind of addicting to. <laughs> Right. So what is your list, Graham? Can um, go, again, can, can we go from, from, from top 10 to 1, but uh, you can add all the comments that you want and uh, the specificity. Okay, well, let me say a couple things first was uh, there's obviously a lot of great players that have played the game at 35 or older, and, and they're now retired. And so, uh, yeah, obviously this, this list doesn't talk about them, but there's a lot of guys that I've seen over the years that were incredible and kind of idols to me. Right. Um, and then also like most of these guys on my list have played like at least 500 plus soccer games in their career at the highest level, especially if you count their international appearances as well, not just their club appearances, which is just incredible to play 500 games. Um, and then, yeah, like, I guess I'll start with my list. Um, number one on it is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Oh, you yeah. go from, from one to ten. Yeah. Is that okay? Let, let's do it reverse. Well, okay. now you have already opened up the – maybe I cut that part. We'll see. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, sorry. My bad. It's fine, it's fine. Okay. So number ten on my list si. is Klaas Jan Huntelaar, Ooh. the Dutch striker uh, – He's at Ajax, actually, right now. Mm -hmm. Though he's, in my knowledge, he's been around the Bundesliga and he's played in Spain for Madrid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's... I'm also partial to strikers. 
He's not the most pro- prolific striker I've ever seen, but I've definitely seen games where he's put in two goals easy and sometimes even hat tricks. So he's just like, it's nice to see his consistency and has been around for a while. Um, yeah, just a strong player I've always admired. Yeah, I think his nickname was the Hunter or something like that, maybe. El Cazador. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, forward. Mm-hmm. Vale. Yeah. Uh, number nine on my list is Rodrigo Palacios. Um, okay. <laughs> first, he's known for something that's just, uh, for me, it's just his hair. He has the rat tail and he's just never changed it. So it's, it's kind of a funny look, but it's cool. And uh, I first noticed him when he was playing at Boca Juniors. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's always been pretty creative and also just a very hardworking player. I guess right now he's in Bologna in the Serie A. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. I believe it's Serie A, Bologna. Uh, Could be Serie B. Yeah. Serie. I, don't, I'm, I, I can't take it right now, but yeah. It's a team that drops in per- – through promotion relegation between the top two divisions. But he's always been a player that I always thought his, his engine and his work rate attacking, like he'll press high, he'll work hard in the midfield. Uh, and he, he's an unselfish player. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like about him. Yeah. yeah. So Palacios. And then number eight on my list is Carlos Tevez, another Argentine. Um, Where is playing Tevez? Also in Argentina, right? Yeah, he's back at Boca Juniors. Yeah. Uh, probably going to finish up his career there. Uh, and, you know, he is one of the most tenacious forwards I've seen. Just has a nose for goal and never stops working hard. It's kind of that South American style that I really admire. Um, See. And, yeah, I, uh, Del potre- I remember. Del Potrero. What? From the Potrero, the, de los Campos de Tierra. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so number seven on my list is another South American, Claudio Pizarro. And he's actually the oldest guy that I could find that's still well, he's playing. Good. He's 41. <laughs> and he's playing in the Bundesliga for Werder Bremen. Mm-hmm. And Forever. I, yeah, I think I remember the most of him was he was at Bayern Munich. <laughs> for years and again another solid forward crafty in front of the goal also unselfish at times he'll set his teammates up and just there was a lot of consistency from him for Bayern for many years mm-hmm. he played before in Werder Bremen as well in probably 10 years ago or so so in a way he's also coming back to home home yeah and <laughs> Now that you mentioned that, uh, that is something some of these players do. And the next guy on my list, Joaquin, is a great example of that. Hmm. Uh, he was, like, scoring goals in the early 2000s for Betis. Yes. And now he's been back in Betis in the last couple of seasons as the captain and kind of the, the veteran player leading that team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure how they've been doing in the table, but it's always a club I kind of had some interest in. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Joaquin, I, I remember him most notably being a winger mm-hmm. and uh, playing a lot of games for Valencia. Mm-hmm. I remember him being kind of a big name at Valencia, as well as the national team. Mm-hmm. He, he is the first one that is not a forward on your list. He's more yeah. a winger, and he still plays uh, important minutes for Betis. And he is still trying to do 1v1 one one and he's, I don't know, 38 or 39, which is very impressive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so next on my list is kind of a, not a forward again, Dani Alves. Oh, yeah. Sure. And he's back in Brazil at Sao Paulo and he's 37 right now. Um, and yeah, obviously, like he came through in Sevilla and then was like, Picked up by Barcelona and played lots of games, lots of minutes. He was part of that really great Barcelona side. I mean, Dani Alves is super consistent. I like him because he's kind of like super quick, small frame, uh, has like really high energy on the field, technical. Um, 
serve his service only got better and better and better over the years mm-hmm. and yeah even i would almost say his game simplified over the years to like a really consistent um way of getting crosses in and and playing on the right side i believe most of his career mm-hmm. yeah yes yeah, alves is true the, theoretically the history of the game will say he was a, a right back he's a right back but his mentality is probably more of a forward than Pizarro or than, at least than Pizarro, I would say almost. Like his mentality to always be aggressive and everything that he does with the ball, being aggressive, a give and go, a pass, a cross. It's just, and I yeah. think now that you were talking about him, he must be one of the most complete players in the last years who has played on the wing because he, he, he's able to, to do everything, basically. Yeah, it's it's interesting now that you mentioned that because I was watching the Brazil national team. Gosh, it was right when Dani Alves was starting to play with them, and it might have been a qualify, yeah, a World Cup qualifier game, and he was playing more like a a holding mid center mid role. Hmm. His early days for Brazil, which would make sense why he's so complete on the wing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other players that have grown up playing center mid and now as wingers, they're just even that much more dynamic and, and complete. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So number four on my list is Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Again. Um, okay. He's incredible <laughs> incredible uh, athleticism, the way he takes care of his body. Um, honestly, the thing for me with Cristiano Ronaldo is his goals. He has pro- probably, he has never been in at least number four. So you are the first one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's his goals to game ratio at Real Madrid is just, no one's done anything like that recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Ronaldo just, When he first started playing, uh, he gets this transfer from Sporting to uh, Manchester. And he was pretty, like, I was unsure of where he was going to go when he started at Manchester. Mm -hmm. He was kind of inconsistent, and he liked to dribble the ball too much. Yep. But the things he's refined in his game, his ability to finish with his left, for example, is just incredible. Um his pace has always been great, but it's almost incredible how other players, they, they age and they have to be smart. But Ronaldo's one that, you know, he's still got the same pace. Uh, I mean, he's a case study. People look at studying his body and say he has the body of a guy in his early 20s. Yeah. It's the, way, the, the way he jumps, the way yeah. he jumps. <laughs> jumps with the, the headers, the, yeah. His technical ability, mm-hmm. it's, it's incredible. And, you know, one thing I don't like is that there's always this debate between him and Messi. It's like, that's something I ignore. It, it's not really a comparison. Mm-hmm. I, and with all these players, I'm not really comparing any of them, but mm-hmm. just trying to find kind of like the things that stand out to me. Yeah. But yeah, Ronaldo is incredible. Okay. Um, <laughs> Three, two, <laughs> Over Ronaldo. <laughs> okay, so the top three. Um, my coming in at number three is Franck Ribéry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's at uh, Fiorentina. He's thirty-seven. He did ha- suffer a knee injury mm-hmm. in this last campaign, so I don't know if he's going to come back and play. I'm not sure what his status is, but I first admired him, I believe, two thousand six World Cup. Mm -hmm. the French national team, uh, his pace on the wing and his tenacity, his fight. It was, it was awesome to see. Um, he was also a player that kind of, uh, came onto the scene a little bit later as a professional footballer. Mm -hmm. I think he was not, he he was his early twenties, mid twenties when he really got his chances at a higher level. Yeah. And I mean, his, his career at Bayern Munich was excellent. I always would watch Bayern Munich training, and i always be admiring Ribéry. Uh, always liked how he, he could cut inside. He can, he's unselfish. He sees the game. If he can make an assist, he makes the assist. If he can take a shot, he takes a shot. Yeah. yeah. 
It's, a, it's kind of a refined version more of a winger of Tevez, right? Yeah. As some of the Tevez thing, but he adds some other stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. I could see that. Okay, number two on my list, Andres Iniesta. Hombre. <laughs> yeah. Playing for uh, Vissel Kobe in uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, plays like 400, almost 450 games for Barcelona. I mean, Andres Iniesta scores the goal in the World Cup final. <laughs> He's just incredible on the ball. His vision. Like, I don't, I always wonder, he's just like, he's un brujo, you know? Mm -hmm. Mago con la pelota, yeah. Just incredible player. Look, now I see a couple of resemblance, of, bueno, uh, between Riveri and Iniesta in their careers. Iniesta established himself late in FC Barcelona first team, which was in, a little bit incredible, <laughs> but yeah. it took him quite a few years. And then the way they kind of run both, Riveria and Iniesta, is almost like a sliding. Like they are not like running like, like, a, uh, like a spring guy, like a fast guy, like Ronaldo. They are almost like a sliding. Like yeah. Running. Like maybe also that keeps them the physique in a better shape than other guys that are more. Uh, that, run in a different way. Uh, I don't know. It just literally came to my mind thinking on Riveri and then Iniesta. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I mean, Iniesta also, he's, his ability to turn with the ball, mm -hmm. the way he turns, is like he plays in 360 degrees mm -hmm. and also with always a, a vision for attacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then num number one on my list is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And... <laughs> yeah. this, it's an interesting number one I mean he's at Milan he's 38 he's also suffered knee injury in the last couple seasons at Manchester I think and came back from that Yeah, um, he's an extremely cocky and arrogant person <laughs> yes <laughs> very opinionated but I mean in the MLS, he comes over here for LA Galaxy, scores 50 goals. And some of them are just incredible, like golazos. Mm -hmm. um, when he was younger, I mean, he, to have that physique, that size, and to maintain it for so long, that, that does take something special. And for me, a lot of it is that mental, the mentality that he possesses. Um, and he's kind of like out there with his mentality. Um, maybe the other players on this list have a similar mentality, but they're more humble and they're quiet when they're off the pitch. But uh, yeah, Ibrahimovic, um, when I first started watching him, he was kind of a guy with some tricks, some skill with the ball at his feet. For his size, you didn't expect that. Exactly. Um, there was one season when it was either his first or second season at Juventus. And it was a season where Juventus was – uh, ruled for out of the league for cheating, but he played that year and he was a machine. Him and Trezeguet, they were incredible together. Yeah. And, and then Zlatan just like I think after that he went to Inter mm -hmm. and kind of stayed in Italy and he was still scoring incredible goals. And one thing I'll say about Zlatan that's kind of something with me is I know he studied uh, Taekwondo, mm -hmm. the Korea, South Korean martial art, and I actually from like seven to 10 years old, I also was studying Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, it's something about the kicking, the foot eye coordination. It's, it's more of a sport than a martial art. And it requires a lot of uh, striking. And so you're doing a lot of foot striking and these different kind of kicks, which also add themselves to soccer. Mm -hmm. And it kind of develops these neural pathways in your brain where you're, uh, yeah, you're just doing so many strikes. Uh, and I see that in his play. He does these kind of hook kicks, scorpion kicks kind of things exactly. that no, no one else does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Some of the goals that you mentioned at, uh, in MLS, but also with the Sweden national team, the one that, is, that he scored against England on a bicycle kick almost from half. Some of those goals that it seems that he's all, the only one able to do it, 
Um, yeah, uh, but that kind of training has something to do with that ability to kick in, in that way. <laughs> yeah. And he's 39. He's 30. Yeah, he might be. I'm 30, not sure. Yeah. 38 or 39. And, and yeah, over, yeah. Overcoming an injury, as you mentioned, a couple of years ago. So it's, it's another case study to do, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for his size, his height and weight, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. You do, you do see something with these players where they also try and keep their upper bodies really lean mm -hmm. and their lower bodies really strong and their core really strong. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's funny, well, I understand that you like, uh, as you said, that you have some inclination for forwards or forward-minded players. But it's, it's interesting how, you know, we have been told that you are losing some capacities and abilities when you get older and you are supposed to be getting away from the area, from the box. But some of these players keep doing their job. Like you mentioned uh, Huntelar, you mentioned Tevez, Pizarro, of course, uh, Cristiano, of course, Ibrahimovic. They keep doing that in the section of the game that is supposed to be more difficult because you need those physical, you know, uh, abilities to, to make a separation and things like that. But uh, these players, right. they are defining uh, those conceptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then one thing I would mention about this as I was studying kind of the leagues and the age of players, uh, one interesting note is that in the Serie A, which is kind of known for having older players, uh, there's around 29 players right now over the age of 35 in that league. Yeah. It's, and, and there are many of them are defenders, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was also doing some of the work as well that you had to do, and I came to the same conclusion. Like, of course, there are goalkeepers. Uh, we haven't mentioned Buffon or Handanovic, but there are also defenders, Chiellini, one of the most representative ones, and yeah, it, there is always something about the the culture and, and the Serie A that uh, prize so much and put so much emphasis on experience when it comes to to the game of soccer. Uh, that yeah, it's that data that you mentioned. It doesn't surprise us. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay. The bueno. The the last thing to do just just basically is yes, just to finish and. It's just, of course, thanking, thanking you for, for doing this. Um, I will keep track for sure of how is the, the soccer season going for you. A um, couple of things. Uh, one thing is that uh, in, in these conversations, one of the people that we had before is Cesar Caneda. Uh, he, play, he has played, uh, he has the record of uh, soccer games playing professional divisions in Spain, first and second division. Uh, he's 42, and he's now going to be playing with his team to promote to second division again. Um, he is a nerdy of keeping his body uh, where it should be. So uh, I don't know if I would be able to put you in contact, but you should definitely follow his Instagram account at least. Oh, yeah. yeah, Cesar Caneda. The other thing is that uh, I am doing this with other young players to promote them, as, as you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But you could also uh, share with me uh, some of your footage if you want me to add to, to this interview. Okay. And then the last thing is that uh, one of the main reasons why I started just doing these things, it's, uh, it's to, to keep the um, the feeling of community thanks to soccer so of course having you which you are one of my best friends having you in here it's of course uh a testament to that but uh that is also you mentioned you are right now playing and you mentioned you know the opportunity to be learning and sharing things from others in the team uh, as part of the opponents but also this is part of it this is part of uh, you know as an excuse to create new relationships with other people, to keep the relationships that we have already, and yes, to foster them thanks to the excuse of soccer. So um, that is 
something something very important it's not the top it's just what what we can do with soccer uh, as as you are doing final thoughts from you amigo Graham. anyone anything that you want to add oh well i mean i appreciate you offering me this experience and yeah it, this is my passion soccer is my passion and i'd like to work in and around it as long as i possibly can so yeah i mean yeah. that that's why i'm doing this it's be connected with this game mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just lucky to have this opportunity so yeah I mean I take it one day at a time and enjoy it but uh, yeah I don't I don't want to stop you know mm -hmm. yeah just keep doing the thing that we are passionate for is the key okay muchas gracias Graham de acuerdo estamos en contacto vale okay yeah thanks Yaki thank you